Hello out there, and today we're going to be talking about the 10 things that you need to know about the Honey Badger knife. Let's get right into it with number one, which is specs and background. I'll throw the specs up on the left side, but I do want to talk a little bit about the background of the knife because it seems to me that there are just a lot of people and a number of different companies involved in bringing this knife to uh, to all the customers around the world who are interested in it. Because, uh, you know, when I unboxed the knife, my first impression was that, yeah, this is a very impressive piece for, for 30 bucks, a really good budget knife. But then I started seeing all these different company names. You know, I see Ultratech, which seems to be the company that actually produces the knife. But then on the uh, the information that they send with it, you can see WesternActive.com seems to be someone who's involved. And then Light Optic is another company that's right here. So what is this knife all about and, and who's involved with it? And I wanted to know a little bit more info because I was checking out different websites trying to order different models and I couldn't quite figure out what was what. So I sent Western Active an email, and the guys over there were really cool. They got right back to me, and they said that this is a South African design, and that's really uh, where the company is from, and that this model right here, the Honey Badger, is the first one to be distributed to the United States. Now, that's not to say that people in the U.S. haven't gotten this knife uh, previously, but this is the first one that's been actively like being sent to Amazon you know, with the intention of coming to the U.S. And so that's this Honey Badger flipper right here on the, um, on the picture here. There are three different sizes of it, but there are some other models that hopefully down the road we'll be able to see from them. A hook model and then a like claw model and a few other like non-Honey Badger designs as well that eventually, if this knife continues to gain the traction that I've been seeing it get in the marketplace, uh, hopefully that'll just open more doors to, uh, to more models and more offerings from this company. So looking forward to that. But now getting into number two, uh, talking about this knife itself with materials and sizes. So the materials of this knife, the main material I wanna talk about here is the, uh, the scales. Right, so the scales here are a like plastic, glass-filled nylon, polymer, Zytel, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's a plasticky type of scale. You know, a lot of experience with these type of scales and no real issue with them depending on the size of the knife. And that's relevant because with this model, we have three different sizes that are available. There's a small, medium, and a large one. What's in front of you today is the medium one. And I can tell you guys, this plastic scale, I have zero issue with it on the medium size. Um, what I will say in my experience is that the smaller a knife is with plasticky scales, the better quality I think those scales are. And what I've always said about like the Spyderco Delica versus the Endura, I like the Delica scales a whole lot more, even though it's the same material, because in a more compact and maybe more dense uh, package, it just seems to work out better. You know, the best example of that is the Benchmade Griptilian. The full-size Griptilian, the, the scales to me seem flimsy and plastic and cheap. On the mini one, it's never been an issue. I like the, the stock mini Griptilian scales. It's the same material, but the, the construct of it seems a little bit different. And so while I don't have the other two versions of this knife, the Honey Badger in front of me, uh, my guess is that since I like the scales on this size, that I would really like them on the smaller one. And the larger one, um, it I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to check that one out, but it just might not be my cup of tea. Just as I see the larger a knife get, um, yeah, the less the plastic scales seem to work for me and the more I favor a different kind of material. But that's uh, something I'll follow up on in the future because I do have plans to eventually get all three of these knives. All right, so moving on to number three. Number three, we're going to hit on one of the two biggest selling points of this knife, and that is all of the, the many extra details when it comes to machining and the quality that you get for the price that you pay. And the biggest thing about that is the jimping. Every review that you see on this knife is going to hit on all of the jimping and not just how much of it there is, but how good it really is. All right, we're taking a look just from the top. Um, you can see all of the jimping on the spine. It's excellent traction. It isn't sharp. It just grabs your thumb very nicely. And then we also have it on the actual scales themselves. And it's the same way. It's good, it's usable, it's functional. And the thing that this does is having the jimping here and here, it gives you comfort 
and actual usability of the knife in a multiple grip configuration. So however you're holding the knife, it's going to be able to, to cut and you're gonna be able to, to get the purchase that you want. Just very impressive with that. Just uh, all of the extra steps that it shows that the people who designed this knife and and spent money on manufacturing it did everything that they could to to give us the best quality piece possible. You can see all of the uh, the machining on the inside of the nested liners, so that's definitely a good thing. Keeps the weight below three ounces, which is impressive. We also do have jimping on the underside of the uh, the choil, which um, I don't see that very often. And it's cool, and you can see it's uh, it's done well, just like the other jimping. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, but again, it's another good step. Um, one more thing that just really impresses me is the uh, the opening hole. Taking a look at the opening hole, you can see there's that extra chamfering right there. Um, and I think it's chamfering. I think I just made it like a, a silent French <laughs> word, a silent C there or a soft C, but no, it's chamfering. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can see it on here and it just just another way of showing that, hey, this is a, an extra detail. It's not sharp. It makes it easier to uh, to flick the knife open. Yeah, and it's not something that you expect at this price point with this kind of budget knife. So there is just a lot of functional value. It's not fluff. You know, there's no fluff on this knife. Every little extra detail uh, helps make the knife more functional. So very cool aspect of it there. Um, moving on, uh, it's not all sunshine and daisies though. You know, number four is going to be uh, the wrong kind of sharp. There are a couple spots in here in the machining that just aren't perfect. Are they big deals? No, I'll tell you that right now, but um, I'm not going to just like <laughs> pass over some of the flaws of the knife and there are just a couple of them in, in my estimation. So what I've noticed just in using the knife is a little bit of a hot spot just right here uh, where like the edge of the plastic scale is and, and that happens a lot with a number of different models you know your your skin can get caught when you're bearing down really hard and it can be a little bit sharp um, one other thing that I've noticed is as you can see where the uh, the liner lock is where it meets the the lock face of the blade there is just a, a little bit of a a sharp corner here it just extends let me see if I can get that closer and focused so yeah, just the, the corner here just juts out a little bit further than in other like liner lock knives. Taking a look at the CRKT uh, Caligo Caligo, uh, this one is just a lot more flush, and so your finger can't get in there and poke that edge. Um, same thing on the, uh, the Kershaw Fault, I always forget the name of this model, the Fault Line. So yeah, it's a lot more flush, so you're not gonna get poked. Um, again, minor detail, and I have plans to take this knife apart anyway, so I mean with a piece of sandpaper or a Dremel and five minutes, both of those issues can be taken care of. But yeah, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Even though a lot of the machining is beyond excellent, uh, it's not perfect. So there's that. All right, moving on to number five. Number five is the other of the biggest selling points. This one is actually the biggest selling point. The coolest thing about this knife is the satisfying action. The action on this knife is on point. It flips open beautifully, has a good detent, can't shake it out, but it flies open. The sound is satisfying. It has that like deep thwack. <laughs> I really like that. Um, it's very comfortable to open with the, uh, the opening hole, right-handed or left-handed. I mean, I can flick it open very, very easily. And it's just one of those those knives that you just want to to have in your hand. You just want to play with. You know, my buddy Patty's Potato Peelers was uh, was talking about this just the other day in one of his videos. That you know uh, he was talking about a knife that is just fun to uh, to have in your hand while you're watching TV. And I always have like two or three knives next to me while I'm watching TV. And this has been one of them for a long time because it's just so much fun to uh, to just play with, open and close and actuate. And over the hundred. A thousand plus times that I've opened this knife, the lockup has stayed perfect, so that's cool. But yeah, the other thing that you you got to be honest about when it comes to that is the knives that you like to play with and take out and open and close, they're the ones you carry more than others. So having really good action, you know, makes this knife, you know, one that I want to carry and, and keep around. So it definitely helps it get more use too. So just a huge, huge home run with this knife. Um, doesn't quite drop shut, but you can see pretty darn smooth. So just 
excellent job on the action with the, the manual ball bearings there. All right, so getting on to number six. So number six is uh, deep on one side, and that's all about the pocket clip. So everybody that you uh, you talk to about this knife is going to talk about this clip. It is a very good clip, extremely deep carry. It hides the knife almost perfectly, 100%. So that is a good thing. Um, a little bit of dirt does get in behind where the clip is here. Uh, it is not reversible, so it's just this one position. But yeah, for people who like a uh, either a concealed or just a very you know subtle carry, um, this is a uh, a really good one for you. All right, and moving on to number seven. Number seven, this knife really stands up to uh, to the best competitive options that are out there. I'm gonna bring back in at the CRKT Caligo, Caligo, whatever you wanna call it, which is named the best buy of the year for uh, for 2018. And these two knives have the same materials with uh, 8CR13 MOV and have the same price point right around 30 bucks. And in a lot of ways, you know, for a functional tool, the Honey Badger might be a better knife. You know, overall, when it comes to aesthetics, I certainly will lean towards the, the Caligo. Um, I think overall, I still do like the Caligo more. But if you're just looking for a beater knife, a knife that's going to be maybe better in hand, this one is going to be better in hand than a Caligo. So, I mean, it goes right up against what some of the best knives out there are at this price point, And it holds its own. So, yeah, when you're looking at that other knives' competitive options, I mean, this is just because it's not made by a, uh, a big-name company doesn't mean it's not right up there with some of the best stuff that they're doing. All right, number eight is, uh, is one of the big things for me with the knife is customization. <laughs> Custom, customization. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. But, yeah, the customizability, customability, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it. Somebody let me know the right word down below because uh, I obviously forgot English. But this is a knife that you can definitely modify. And that's one of the things I thought of when I first saw it. I mean, these tan scales, even though it is available in a black, the tan scales can be dyed which I am going to do. Uh, this knife just looks like it's begging for an acid etch or maybe some anno. And so, yeah, for 30 bucks, being able to, uh, to pick up one of these and then pimp it out, man, you better believe you're going to be seeing a lot of that on this channel. A number of these are going to be done. So yeah, just really excited about that. And if you are someone who's looking for a, a project knife or a knife to just sort of make your own, this is pretty close to a, a blank canvas in a number of ways. So very cool there. All right. Number nine is going to be my overall recommendation. Um, yeah, guys, I recommend it. Uh, obviously, as we've talked about before, no matter what you are looking at, no matter what knife you see at any price point, there is going to be one that's cheaper and maybe better. But this knife really checks off a lot of the boxes that you should have if you're looking for just an EDC blade, uh, an EDC user knife. This one is really going to do it for you. Um, the action is great. It, it just, dude, they just killed it. <laughs> they just really killed it. And for 30 bucks, um, yeah, I'm very pleased with this. Pleased with the quality. Impressed with uh, the level of customer service and communication that I got. Excited about more things from these guys at this budget price. So, yeah, uh, are there better knives out there? Sure. Are these handled material scales and is the steel going to be for you? Maybe not, but yeah, if you're looking for just a regular EDC blade, this might be the best one. Now, getting into number 10, the bad news is right now, the middle of August 2018, this knife is a little bit hard to find. Um, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people have recently done reviews on this knife. Uh, it's gaining a lot of traction. The hype train, I'll say, has officially come into station. You know, my buddy T-Mac recommended this knife to me in the middle of July, and I picked it up. And at that point, I thought I was the only person who had it. I didn't think anyone else even really knew about it. I didn't know of more than one or two people, and they were overseas, who had this knife. And then all of a sudden, reviews started coming out. So, uh, yeah, people are in the know, and what that means is it is selling. It is selling out. And it might be a little bit difficult to find right now, but be patient. It'll be back on Amazon. I'm sure the distributors are working really hard to, to get them back out and it'll be worth the wait guys. It 100% will. So yeah, keep your eye out and hopefully we'll be seeing more than just this model, some other stuff as well. But any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. But those are the 10 things I think you need to know about this knife. Have a good one. Thanks for watching and take care.